My belief situation is complicated. You could call me an atheist, but that's not quite right. There may be a creator, but he doesn't need to be a conscious being. I like to touch and feel things. I need to see something. Okay, but as we know that the material did not exist before the Big Bang, so how can you say that? So the Big Bang started it then. Is there any other option? But just because there isn't any proof doesn't mean that we're going to give up on trying to prove it. This is the point we don't agree on. What is it? Your reasoning pushes you there. My opinion is that it will be proven in the future. So you say it will be proven in the future? So Tolga, what is your belief? My belief situation is complicated. I don't have a belief. I believe in myself. You believe in yourself? What I mean by believing in myself is that I'm kind of an atheist, but not really. There could be a creator, but he doesn't need to be a conscious being. Okay, so you were a Muslim before. Did you change your mind? What happened? Well, to tell you the truth, I have read Al-Mali. His commentary? Yes, a commentary. Al-Mali's commentary. Very nice. Did you read all of it? I read half of it, and I'll tell you why later. I also read one by the Directorate of Religious Affairs. Nice. I had the PDF, so I read that. And it seemed kind of, well, it had a very angry tone. So you read the commentary, but it didn't really convince you? I read the commentary, and I felt anger inside of it. There are verses about the hell and warning verses. The person warning you is constantly very angry. But you haven't read the whole thing. How can you evaluate wholly without reading the whole? There were 750 pages. I calculated that I had read 375, but I was in a difficult period. And I'm also getting prepared for an exam. I read it during the summer and felt that this was too much negativity for me, so... You might have come across different things if you had read the other half. I've read the commentary many times. For example, I can say this. You mentioned that there were verses including warnings, but there are twice as many verses mentioning mercy and forgiveness. Now, let's think about an example. You know when you're traveling in a car, you see numbers like 100, 70, 50 on the side of the road? They're warning signs telling you to slow down. Does the fact that there are many warnings mean that there is a bad intention behind them? Or does it prove that someone is trying to prevent us from having an accident as a result of his mercy for us? Does he want bad things or good things for us? I don't know. It depends. We can talk about this, about Islam and the Quran. But first, let's talk about the possibility of a creator. Does he exist or not? We need to evaluate things rationally, with reason and from a scientific perspective. Yes, for example, CERN. The CERN experiment. Exactly, they discovered a large two-dimensional particle. They are trying to. I heard they discovered it. So how could it transform from two dimensions to three dimensions? Well, some claim it's a game theory. They also have this idea of a machine, a quantum machine. So I thought, could that be the creator? Why not? They're doing things. For example, do you know what they're trying to find? They're doing research about the Higgs boson. They're looking into the issue of of energy gaining max. They actually call it the God Particle. Actually, initially they called it the Goddamn Particle. They're not changing its name to keep it on the agenda. So they're doing research on the ability to gain energy and gain mass. That's what they're looking into. Great. I'm that kind of person who needs to touch and feel something. I need to see it. Why isn't it easy? My friend, I'm going to prove this to you with a very simple example. We have both a material eye and an eye of reason. What do I mean by this? Your material eye only sees what is there, but your reason does not see or evaluate it. Your eye of reason evaluates what it sees and comes to a conclusion. For example, when you look at the sun with your material eye, what color is it? Yellow. You can see that it is yellow. Our material eye says that the sun is yellow. But what is its real color? Science says it is white. Our mind makes calculations and considers the rays. So your eye of reason reaches a conclusion after considering the sun's rays. But when our eye of reason steps in, it says, hold on, we need to account for refractions. The actual color is white, and thus it finds the truth. So now we are going to think about another example in a truth. Imagine that you entered a room, okay? You look around, there's a two-month-old baby. The baby's sitting in front of a computer. You see a program like GTA 5 on the screen. There's an amazing code displayed on the screen, but the person sitting in front of it is a two-month-old baby. So now your eyes tell you that the baby wrote the program, but your eye of reason says a baby can't do this. Why would I believe what my eyes say? If I look at the baby and he's holding his hands like this, then I would say he did it. But do you know why I'm saying this? Because there's no one else in the room, only the baby in the computer. There's a program as complicated as GTA 5 displayed on the computer screen and the baby's in front of it. Your eyes say, oh, the baby did it, but your eye of reason says, hold on, a two-month-old baby cannot do this. Well, really telling you this at that point. The information they're giving you is there's a baby in front of the computer. The reason your eyes tell you the baby wrote that GTA program is because your brain is telling you this. Would your reason say this? Would your reason say that the baby did it? Or would it say, wait a minute, it can't be the baby. There must be someone else behind this. What kind of characteristics should he have? He should be knowledgeable in living. He must have a will and power. In fact, let's do this. Let's make it a doll instead of a two-month-old baby. A lifeless toy is just sitting in front of a computer. Then would we even need to talk about any possibilities? Rather, even someone with knowledge could barely do this. How could a lifeless thing do it? Then the eye of reason would say, no, this toy doll could not do this. Even though I can't see him, there must be someone else here. This person must have serious programming skills. He must be alive and have knowledge, will, and power. This is what your reason says. And so, is GTA 5 a higher quality and more complicated work of art than the universe with everything that lives in it?
planet like you and me and millions of species of living creatures? Or is this a better work of art? Which is a better work of art? Life is better, and if life is better, there must be a will behind its creation. I'll get to the point. I know where you're going with this. Good. I look at my eyes and I think they're a better work of art than GTA 5, and even GTA 5 has a human mind behind it. The universe that we humans live in is undoubtedly a more perfect and beautiful work of art. So if we say that the baby could not have written that program, then how can we say that there isn't a creator of this universe and the people living in it such as you and I? Do my eyes tell me that the universe is made up of atoms? Yes. But are these atom living things? No. No. So atoms who do not possess life, knowledge, will, or power have come together to produce people like you and I. How can we say that Adams wrote the program for living creatures like you and me who are much better work of art than GTA 5? Is this logical? Or should I say, brother, hold on a minute, a non-living Adam cannot do this. There must be some kind of being with life, knowledge, will, and power behind this, even if I can't see him. See, I didn't even say God yet. We'll come to that later. Isn't it more likely that there is a being that possesses these qualities regardless of what you name it, like X or Y, etc.? For me to accept such a being, uh, but it's not logical that that being exists. How isn't it logical? If it wasn't for that being, how would all these things come to be? Everything just fell into place. They just fell into place. Okay, it's not highly likely, but unlikely things do happen in the universe. We haven't even started talking about any possibilities yet. You need data to be able to talk about possibilities. Without data, we can't talk about possibilities. For example, why isn't there any data? Because if we don't accept a being who started all these things, there's no need to talk about data. Well, there were atoms, and there was a big explosion. Yes, the Big Bang. After the explosion, the universe started expanding. Okay. The universe has energy. All right. You know this better than I do. Yes. So, there wasn't enough organic material on Earth, and I know that atoms come to Earth because of meteor storms and water was formed after that. What is needed for water to form? H2O, right? I know it also needs energy. Before we talk about this, let's go back even further. If you don't accept a creator, then how can all of this happen? If there's no being, then how can existence come from non-existence? I would need a lot of knowledge to be able to answer that. When did materials form? When did materials Was form? it during the Big Bang? Okay, but if there were no materials before the Big Bang, then how is it possible? So the Big Bang pushed it then. Is there any other option? There must be another answer. Why wouldn't there be? Like what? Well, there's the antimatter theory. So you're saying it's a question of antimatter matter. Okay, I'm not an expert on the topic. So isn't this like say, man, just let it go. They know what they're talking about. No, we don't say they know better and give up. You're a clever guy. You've already stated a fact. You said the baby could not have done this. What else is there to say? Okay. There isn't any proof as to how life was created on Earth. You're right there. But just because there is no proof now doesn't mean that we will stop trying to find a proof. I'll give you an example now that will eliminate any possibilities. I have a sphere in my hand, okay? It has 100 white tennis balls in it. What's the chances of me pulling a ball with one on it out of these balls that are numbered from 1 to 100? 1 in 100. Okay, so I choose one. What's the possibility that I get a red one? That's impossible. That's impossible. But if I tried for a trillion years, would anything change? It wouldn't, right? Exactly. Why? Because there are no red balls in there. Just so, let's think of those red and white balls as atoms. Because those atoms are not living things and no matter how much you try, you will not choose a ball that is red. You will never get a ball that is a living thing. In your example, the atoms have not come together to form life. That happens when the being you mentioned is involved. Absolutely. Is there any other way? Is there? Tell me if there is. If there was a kind of electrical force within the organic matter. What is the organic matter? Carbon, azote, oxygen, fluorine. Do they possess life? They don't. But if there were something to bring these together, something to organize them. There still wouldn't be life. Some kind of emergency outlet. Remember the sphere? There are no red balls in the sphere. Whatever atom you look at, there is no sign of life. So in this case, there is no room for possibilities here. There needs to be a being that has a red ball that has life and can give life. What I'm trying to say is when you think about a non-living being becoming a living being, science is at work, but there is also room for logic. This is where we differ. Where? Your rationale shapes your perspective. You interpret the balls turning from white to red as the work of a being. That's how you see it. How do you interpret this? Because I don't see any other way. Exactly. You don't see any other options. So what I'm saying is that the other option is, and I've said this a hundred times before. You say something must have happened? Exactly. Something must have happened. I wish I had enough scientific background to be able to discuss this with you further, but I don't. My friend, I have discussed this with many people, and believe me, there is no answer. 
Like I said, you should use your own logic instead of talking to other people. Look at the data and try to come to a conclusion. But you can't get there. Your logic doesn't get you there because even when you look at the data, you can't reach a provable conclusion. You used your own logic, right? But you accepted it in the beginning, right? You said a toy does not possess any life or knowledge, can't write this GTA 5 program. Think as much as you like, or don't think at all. It's very clear. So what I did there was to interpret what my eyes showed me in a logical way. Okay, so your eyes can be tricked, but your eye of reason says, no, it can't do it, brother. But the case here is not so simple. There are more possibilities. Even better. Let go of the possibilities. I just said that there is no room for possibilities. Look, the life is perfect according to me and you. Even if it wasn't, is there something there? If something has been created, we need to ask who created it. So if there's something there, we're asking who made it. Whether you like GTA 5 or not, I'm talking about the properties and capabilities of the being who must have created it. Whether you like GTA 5 or not, the point is that the baby could not have written it. But the world is not GTA 5. It's even better than that. There is a programmer there. So then, the world was programmed by... So what's your point then? Do you claim that the atoms did it, or is there a being who did it? Or are you going to say that it's the atoms? The point I'm making is this. Even though it's a low possibility, somehow there must have been a transformation from non-living to living. And I know that I'm not speaking very scientifically right now, but this is my opinion. I believe this can be proven in the future. So you can say it can be proven in the future? Thank you very much.